dear students in the previous lecture i was discussing about how to use spreadsheet for solving simulation problems in this lecture i'm going to discuss about decision analysis so the agenda for this lecture is how to formulate a decision problem then decision making without probabilities what is the meaning of decision making without probabilities the another name we can call it is decision making with uncertainty now i am going to explain the relationship between decision alternatives and states of nature in a decision analysis look at this table the rows represents in the rows there is umbrella there is no umbrella in the column there is a rain and no rain so whatever there on this side it is called decision alternatives decision alternative is something on your hand you have control over that for example whether you can carry umbrella or you need not carry the umbrella that is called decision alternative the another one in the column it is states of nature rain or there is no rain so the act of rain is not in your hand so the another name for this act of rain we can say it is states of nature so whenever there is a for example there is intersection in this table there is a rain and there is a umbrella so what will happen that you are very happy you are happy and you have carried umbrella but there is no rain so what will, how what will be your feeling you are not happy and you did not take umbrella but there is a rain again what will happen here also you are not happy now there is no umbrella at the same time there is no rain so what will be your state of mind so you will be very happy so this rain and no rain is nothing but the states of nature carrying umbrella or not carrying umbrella is called your decision alternative so this combination of these two so this is nothing but your payoff payoff is whether you are happy or not happy that is called your payoff so these two term three terminology will be using in this lecture problem formulation the first step in the decision analysis process is problem formulation we begin with verbal statement of the problem we then identify the decision alternatives the uncertain future events referred to as chance events and the consequences associated with each combination of decision alternatives and chance event outcome in the previous slide i have explained decision alternative is whether you want to carry or not carry umbrella that is a decision alternatives chance event is whether there will be rain or there won't be any rain the consequence is your your feeling your 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 mood whether you are happy or not happy so these three important terminology will be using throughout this lecture i have taken a sample problem this problem is taken from the book anderson et al a company has purchased a land that will be the site for a new luxury condominium complex condominium is a, a type of flats build flats the company plans to price the individual condominium units between 300000 to 1400000 the company commissioned preliminary architectural drawing for three different projects what are the three different projects the company is planning they can go for the last one for example 30 condominiums okay smaller size then they can go for 60 condominiums medium size then they can go for 90 condominiums that is a large size small this is d1 small d2 
medium d 3 large. These are the three decision alternatives. The financial success of the project depends upon the size of the condominium complex and the chance event concerning the demand for the condominium. Here the chance event is demand. The states of nature is demand. The statement of the company's decision problem is to select the size of the luxury condominium project that will lead to the largest profit given the uncertainty concerning demand for the condominiums. So, what we have to suggest to this company is what should be the size of the condominium whether small, medium, large. What you have to consider the uncertain event that is the demand and the payoff profit. First we will decide what is the decision alternatives in this problem. Given the statement of the problem, it is clear that the decision is to select the best size for the condominium complex. The company has following three decision alternatives D1 small, D2 medium, D3 large complex. So, these D1, D2, D3 are decision alternatives. A factor in selecting the best decision alternative is the uncertainty associated with the chance event concerning the demand for the condominiums. So, here the states of nature is demand. When asked about the possible demand for the condominiums, the company's president acknowledged a wide range of possibilities. There are different possibilities, but decided that it would be adequate to consider two possible chance event outcomes. What are the two possible chance event outcomes? One is the demand may be strong demand or the demand may be weak demand. So, the demand is the states of nature that may be a strong demand or weak demand. In decision analysis, the possible outcomes for a chance event are referred to as the states of nature. As I told you whether it is raining or not raining, look at the picture on the right hand side. So, there is a rain, the bottom one there is no rain. In our problem, the demand may be a strong demand or weak demand. Okay. So, the states of nature are defined so, they are mutually exclusive, no more than one can occur and collectively exhaustive at least one must occur. Thus, one and only one of the possible states of nature will occur whether it may rain or not rain or the demand may be a strong demand or weak demand. So, for the problem in discussion, the chance event concerning the demand for the condominium has two states of nature. One is strong demand S yes, 1, weak demand S yes, 2. So, what is the goal of the management? The management must first select the decision alternatives that is the complex size. Then the states of nature follows that is the demand for condominium. In this case, the consequence is the company's profit. So, before uh, getting into the problem, we will understand what is influence diagrams. Influence diagram is a graphical device that shows the relationships among the decisions, chance events and the consequences for the decision problems. The nodes in the influence diagram represent the decisions, chance events and consequences. Rectangles or squares depict the decision nodes, circles or ovals depict the chance nodes, the diamond depict the consequence nodes. 
the lines connecting the nodes referred to as arc show the direction of influence that the nodes have on one another. In this picture look at the right hand side there is an influence diagram. Figure shows the influence diagram for the problem. The complex size is the decision node and the demand is the chance nodes and the profit is consequences nodes. The arc connecting the nodes shows that both complex size and the demand influence the company's profit. You see complex size D1, D2, D3 that will affect your profit. Look at the chance nodes strong demand or weak demand that also will affect your profit. The next is a pay of tables. Given the three decision alternatives and the two states of nature, which complex size should the company choose? To answer this question, the company will need to know the consequences associated with each alternative and each states of nature. In decision analysis, we refer the consequence resulting from a specific combination of a decision alternative and the states of nature as a payoff. So, in decision alternatives, the consequence is nothing but your payoff. A table showing payoff for all combinations of decision alternatives and states of nature is a payoff table. In the beginning of the lecture, I was showing that uh, umbrella and rain. So, the consequences your happiness or not happiness. So, that is nothing but your payoff table. The values nothing but the payoff values. Payoff can be expressed in terms of profit. It is a very important point. The payoff can be the profit or cost or time or distance or any other measure appropriate for decision problem being analyzed. In this problem, the payoff is the profit, but it is not necessary it should be always profit, sometime it may be cost, sometime it may be time, sometime it may be distance and so on. The payoff table for the condominium projects, all the payoffs are in terms of million dollar. You see a decision alternative D1, D2, D3, states of nature. So, this is 8 million. What is the meaning of this 8 represents? If you go for suggesting to that company small complex size, if the demand is strong demand, the payoff will be the 8 million dollar. If you suggest medium complex, the payoff will be 14 million dollar. If you suggest large complex, the demand is strong demand, it will be 20 million dollar. Similarly, the values for weak demand also. We will use the notation Vij to denote the payoff associated with the decision alternative i and the states of nature j. For example, look at the table V31, third decision alternative first states of nature. So, that means it is a 20. What is the meaning of this 20? This 20 indicates a payoff of 20 million dollar occurs if the decision is to build a large complex and the strong demand states of nature occurs. Similarly, look at V32 that is this location. Indicate minus 9. V32 is minus 9 indicates a loss of 9 million dollar if the decision is to build a large complex and the weak demand states of nature yes to occurs. Another important point I wanted to say that this payoff table can be represented in the form of tree that is your decision tree. So, what will happen look at the D1, D2, D3, these are your decision alternatives. 
look at in the influence diagram also we say this is the decision alternatives the, the circle represents the states of nature it may be a strong demand and weak demand. So, the point I want to say here is that any any payoff table can be represented in the form of decision trees because in the next lecture I am going to explain the decision tree. So, this conversions you should be very convenient for this. Now, we will go for decision making without probabilities. Why we are saying without probabilities? The, the probabilities for chance for example, whether it is a strong demand or weak demand that is not known to you. So, that situation is called decision making under uncertainty. Uncertainty means something which you cannot predict it. So, the opposite to uncertainty is risk. What is the meaning of risk? Something you can attach certain probabilities, but for uncertainty you cannot attach probabilities. Some of the example for uncertain event is say earthquake, tsunami, for these events you cannot attach any probabilities. So, that is an example of uncertain events. For example, a demand, next year what will be the demand, there you can attach certain probability. So, that is the your risk. So, we consider approaches to decision making that do not require knowledge of probabilities of the states of nature. These approaches are appropriate in situation in which the decision maker has little confidence in his or her ability to assess the probability, sometimes it is very difficult to assess the probability or in which a simple best case or the worst case analysis is desirable. Because different approaches sometime lead to different decision recommendations, the decision maker must understand the approaches available and then select the specific approach according to the judgment of the decision maker which is most appropriate for him. So, we are, we are going to make the decision to the as per the judgment of the decision maker. The decision maker may be an optimistic person, he is in a very optimistic approach. When I say optimistic approach, he is optimistic about the demand. The optimistic approach evaluates each decision alternatives in terms of best payoff that can occur. The decision alternatives that is recommended is one that provides the best possible payoff. For a problem in which maximum profit is desired, the optimistic approach would lead to the decision maker to choose the alternative corresponding to the largest profit. For problems involving minimization, this approach leads to choosing the alternative with the smallest payoff. So, for a optimistic approach what will you do if, if the payoff is the profit we will go for maximum profit. In the optimistic approach if the payoff is in terms of cost we will go for minimum cost. For a maximization problem the optimistic approach often referred to as maximax approach. For a minimization problem, this corresponding terminology is your mini min. First, we will take a decision based on optimistic approach. As I told you, there are two possibility max max if the problem is defined in terms of profit, mini min if the payoff is defined in terms of cost. Here, the problem is in terms of profit. So, what I am going to do for each alternatives for example, small complex D 1 which is maximum payoff. So, 8 is the maximum payoff. So, I have written 8. If you go for medium complex, 
which is the maximum payoff 14 is the maximum pay payoff. If I go for large complex which is the maximum payoff 20 as I told you maximax. So, maximum of maximum. So, out of these 3 8 14 and 20 which is maximum of the maximum payoff 20. So, the suggestion is going for large complex. So, if you are making a decision based on the optimistic approach, the suggestion for the management is to go for constructing large complex. Conservative approach maximum or minimax. So, when will you go for maximum? When the payoff is defined in terms of profit. When will you go for minimax when the payoff is in terms of cost? The conservative approach evaluate the, the conservative approach evaluates each decision alternative in terms of worst payoff that can occur. The decision alternative recommended is the one that provides the best of the worst possible payoff. For a problem in which the output measure is profit as in the problem discussion, the conservative approach would lead to decision maker to choose the alternative that maximizes the minimum possible profit. That is why it is called the maximum. What is the meaning of maximum? Maximizing the minimum possible profit that could be obtained. That is why we go for max min maximizing minimum possible profit as a conservative approach. For a problem involving minimization, the best approach is the alternative that will minimize the maximum payoff. So, that is your minimax. Conservative approach for a maximization problem, the conservative approach is often referred to as the maximum approach. For a minimization problem, the corresponding terminology is minimax. In this problem, we are going to discuss about maximum. Look at the D1, D2, D3. First, we will go for minimum payoff. So, among 8 and 7, between 8 and 7, which is minimum? 7 is minimum, 7 I have written. Between 14 and 5, which is minimum? 5 is minimum. Between this 5 is minimum that I have written here. Between 20 and minus 9, minus 9 is minimum. So, 7, 5, minus 9. So, out of this 7, 5, 9, which is maximum? So, 7 is the maximum. So, as per the conservative approach, the maximum principle. So, I will be suggesting for small complex that is D1. You remember, if I am going for optimistic approach, what was my suggestion? D3 is my suggestion going for large complex. If I am conservating, if you are follow conservative approach, it will go for suggesting small complex. Because 7 corresponding to D1 yield the maximum of minimum payoff, the decision alternative of a small condominium complex is recommended. This decision approach is considered conservative because it identify, it identifies the worst possible payoff and then recommend the decision alternative that avoid the possibility of extremely bad payoff. In the conservative approach, the company is guaranteed a profit of at least 7 million. Although the company might make more it cannot make less than 7 million. That is why this is called conservative approach maximum principle. Dear students, so far I have discussed about optimistic approach and conservative approach. The another approach which I am going to discuss now is called minimax regret approach. In decision analysis, regret is the difference between the payoff associated with a particular decision alternative 
and the payoff associated with the decision that would yield the most desirable payoff for a given states of nature. So, what is the meaning of regret? The difference between most desirable payoff and the payoff of a particular decision. Thus, regret represents how much potential payoff one would forego by selecting a particular decision alternative given that a specific states of nature will occur. This is why regret is often referred to as opportunity loss. As its name implies, under the minimax regret approach, the decision making one would choose decision alternative that minimizes the maximum state of regret. So, what will happen? We have to choose decision alternative that minimizes the maximum state of regret that could occur over all possible states of nature. This approach is neither purely optimistic nor purely conservative. Let us illustrate minimax regret approach by showing how it can be used to select a decision alternative for the problem in discussion. First, we have to form a opportunity loss table or regret table. How to form this regret table? Look at the our given payoff table which is in the bottom. Suppose if the demand is strong demand, which is the best decision alternative D3 because that has having the highest payoff. So, each element has to be subtracted from this 20. So, 20 minus 8 we are getting 12, 20 minus 4 is 6, 20 minus 20 is 0. In case of the demand is weak demand which is the highest payoff, 7 is the highest payoff. So, 7 minus 7 is 0, 7 minus 5 is 2, 7 minus minus 9 it is 16. So, here this 12 6 represents loss. So, what is meaning if the demand is strong demand, if you choose D 3 the loss is 0. What is the meaning of this 12? If the demand is strong demand, if you choose D 1 the loss is 12. So, we can write as a formula what is this uh, regret values though highest values V j star what is the V j star payoff value corresponding to the best decision for the states of nature. What is the V i j the payoff corresponding to D i and S j R i j is the regret associated with the D i and S j. So, from the regret table right. Now, I, we are going to use minimax. So, what is the minimax? First, we have to look for maximum loss. So, how we got 12? See that D1 maximum loss is 12. If you go for D2, maximum loss is 6. When you go for D3, the maximum loss is 16. So, that I have written here 12, 6, 16. So, out of this maximum regret which is minimum 6 is the minimum. So, the medium complex important note you should remember. Note that the three approaches discussed in this section provide different recommendation which in itself is not the bad. What are the three recommendations? When we go for optimistic approach. My recommendation was D3. When I go for conservative approach, my recommendation was D1. When I go for minimax regret, 
my recommendation was D2. Now you see all three are different. So, it simply reflect the difference in decision making philosophies that underlie the various approaches. What are the three philosophies we have seen? Optimistic, conservative and using the regret matrix. Ultimately, the decision maker will have to choose the most appropriate approach and then make the final decision accordingly. The main criticism of the approach discussed in this section is that they do not consider any information about the probabilities of the various states of nature. So, regarding this probabilities of the various states of nature that we will discuss in the next class. Dear students, in this lecture we have started a new topic decision analysis. In that what I have explained in this lecture is I have discussed about problem formulation. After that I have discussed about decision making without probabilities that is nothing but decision making with uncertainty. The next class will be discussing about decision making with probabilities that is nothing but decision making with risk. Thank you very much. Thank you.